Hello again everyone, it's me, Matt. Hope you're having a great day, keeping safe at this difficult time. We are talking about the M48 Patton Tank, American Muscle, so to speak. Uh, now, the uh, M48, or the Patton series of tanks, are always one that are quite confusing. The reason for that is they all look fairly similar, whether it be the M47, 48 in its multiple model platforms, or the M60, they are quite a confusing tank for those of you who are not really accustomed to knowing how or what the differences are. And today we are going to talk about the Patton series and how their universality is definitely a major benefit for this tank and how well it has served throughout the world and in conflict in the world also. So the Patton series of Universal Tank is an important backbone to the United States military in history as the T-54 and 55 series was to the Soviets. Both families of tanks were the backbone of the armed forces of two of the most powerful militaries in the world for several decades and, albeit in some heavily upgraded forms, they continue to serve to this day, occasionally even seeing combat. The M48 was the developed successor to the M47, pretty obvious, which was considered as the interim solution. The M47 pattern, produced in the early 1950s, was in many ways a stopgap measure, adopted as a reaction to the rapidly escalating war in Korea. The war caught the US military off guard when it came to tanks. When the hostilities in Korea erupted, the Second World War had been over for less than five years. The US military had slowed down or stopped many arms programs completely, as nobody suspected the United States to be involved in another major conflict anytime soon. This left the United States without enough modern tanks. The US Army was forced to field other vehicles such as the M26 Pershing and the M46 Patton, which essentially was an upgraded Pershing variant. Even the M47 could still in some ways be considered an upgraded M46, as it used the same hull with a different turret from a project that was supposed to replace it, the T-42 medium tank. The decision to launch the M47 production in the summer of 1950 was taken with full awareness of the existing need to produce a tank that would replace both the M46 and the M47. The replacement design, designated the T-48, was based on earlier work from the T-43 heavy tank, specifically the rounded armour element, something a little different than they were used to in seeing from the Russian Soviet design where it was more angled. The frontal hull and turret were both elliptical in shape to improve vehicle protection over the previous M47 design. Development was launched in 1950, but the Ordnance Committee only officially launched the project on February 27, 1951, under the designation of the 90mm gun tank T-48. It also issued a list of requirements. It included a maximum weight of 40.8 tonnes or 90,000 pounds, a four-man crew, which included obviously a loader, a new 90mm gun with a comparable power to the M47's T-119, but lighter, and along with a few other requirements, Chrysler were already working on this project, had received approval to build six of the prototypes. The first prototype chassis was built by Chrysler in Michigan in January 1952 and delivered for initial trials. It received a turret, also developed by Chrysler, in February 1952 and was thoroughly tested under the military supervision in Fort Knox. It's worth noting that despite the production capacity of its Newark plant, Chrysler was at the point of the designated company and the designing company. In order to produce sufficient numbers, however, Ford and GMC were brought in on the project as early as 1951. The second prototype was actually built, strangely, before the first one, in December 1951 in Newark, Delaware, but it was not used for any testing until the conclusion of the first prototype trials in order to incorporate modifications based on the trials into its design. After that, it was tested in the Aberdeen Proving Grounds from April 1952. The third prototype, or the official terminology was Pilot 3, was completed and delivered to Fort Knox in May, and Pilot 4 arrived in July 1952. Based on these tests, further changes were adopted and implemented into Pilot 5 and 6. The Pilot 5 T-48 was subsequently assigned to the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in November 1952, while Pilot 6 T-48 went to the United States Marine Corps for testing. The Pilot T-48 tanks were slightly different from one another, but generally speaking the combat weight of the T-48 was approximately 44.6 tons and it had a crew of 4 men. It was powered by a very powerful 12 cylinder 29.3 litre AV 1790 5B engine. The engine number indicates the displacement in cubic inches, so 1719 cubic inches. This was then coupled with a cross drive CD854 transmission getting that power to the sprockets. Its maximum speed was a fairly 
impressive, approximate 48 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour. The main armament of the T-48 was the 90mm T-139 gun with plus 20 degrees elevation and minus 9 degrees elevation. It carried 60 rounds of main gun ammunition and the rate of fire was approximately 8 rounds per minute with manual loading. The hull steel armour was fairly thick. The upper frontal hull plate was 110mm angled at 60 degrees. The lower frontal hull plate was 102 to 60mm angled at 30 degrees. The side hull armour was around about 76 to 51 millimetres. The rear hull armour was 35 to 25 millimetres, depending on where you were. The hull bottom was 38 to 13 millimetres, again depending on the surface area of the tank itself. And the hull top was 57 millimetres. The steel turret was well curved with the following thicknesses. The gun manlet was 114 millimetres, angled at 30 degrees. The turret front, 178 millimetres. The turret sides, 76 millimetres. The turret rear, 51mm, and the turret top, 25mm. The turret values were only a rough idea, as the thickness really varied considerably based upon the specific spot of the turret due to the turret's round shape and the way in which it was cast. The prototypes were tested until the end of 1952 at both Aberdeen and Fort Knox, but the military wanted the new vehicles to be produced as soon as possible. As a result, mass production of T-48 started in Newark, Delaware in the early 1952 with the first tanks being delivered in April 1952. Ironically, it's April. Both the tests could even be properly concluded. This caused a number of teething problems, since testing feedback was still flowing in from Fort Knox and Aberdeen, and production was already running. To resolve these issues and implement the changes requested by the trials, a committee of representatives from all the companies involved was established in 1952. It was also worth noting that the tanks produced by Ford, GMC, and Chrysler were each quite different. Although these changes were quite minor at the time, for example a stowage box shape, this started causing problems for spares and demand. By March 1953, 893 T-48 tanks had been produced before the vehicle was even officially accepted into service. Talks were held with the military about the official introduction of the T-48 from January 1953. Finally, after three months of talking, the vehicle was officially introduced into service under the designation of the 90mm gun tank M48 on April 2nd, 1953. It bore the official nickname of Pattern 48. The vehicle was introduced as a restricted issue, so it was to be primarily used for training and not really for shipping overseas. Performance wise, the early M48 really wasn't that different from the T48. It was just a bit heavier, weight was increased to 44.9 tons but it was powered by the same engine as the T-48, which was also mounted into the M46 and M47 series at that point, and had a slightly lower maximum speed, about 45 km an hour or 28 miles per hour. The gun and the armour were all the same as well, although the gun had a different muzzle brake. It did, however, undergo a number of modifications. From November 1952 onwards, the vehicle received a new engine, the AV-1797, and then another in August 1954, the AV-1797B. The third variant, the AV-1797C, appeared in November 1954. They all had the same power output though. 810 SEA gross horsepower, which approximately equals to 650 horsepower in the modern system. Very early M48s did not have the famous machine gun cupola, relying instead on an externally mounted anti-aircraft machine gun on a low silhouette cupola by Chrysler. This was not deemed practical, as the commander had to expose his torso in order to operate or reload the weapon. To remedy this issue, the M48 received an aircraft armament model cupola with distinctive shape, and the final design designation of the cupola was M1, from August 1953 onwards. Another issue was the size of the driver hatch, which was simply too small and could, under certain circumstances, virtually be completely blocked by the gun, preventing the driver from getting out quickly or even at all. The remedy to this was larger hatches, and they were introduced quite early into production. And last but not least, the earliest 120 M48s had very faulty hulls of extremely inferior quality and were actually considered unsafe for military service. The number of adjustments during production resulted in huge numbers of M48 variants, all bearing the same designation, but different changes. So, a new naming system was adopted on October 25th, 1954, to differentiate between the types. The M48 was split into the following subtypes. The standard M48, which was the original production with a small driver's hatch with a small Chrysler Cupola. 
the M48C, which is one of the 120 earliest faulty tanks relegated to training only, the M48A1, which was the M48 variant with a bigger hatch and the M1 Coppola. Unlike the later M48 variants, the original M48 was never used in battle. The Korean War was fought only with the M46 and M47, while in Vietnam the war only involved the M48A1 and some of the later variants. Since their introduction to service, the M48s were mostly used for training. None were really exported, although it was possible that some were moved to Europe to guard against the Soviet invasion, but there was just a beginning of the M48 series. Tanks like this would remain in service for four decades in the United States, and that's just alone, and to serve in many parts around the world today. Lots of different militaries are actually still using this tank to this day in its upgraded variations. Of course, we all know of the M60 tank and its other variants as well. Lots of different changes on these tanks that have been made, and they're basically just like a universal upgraded tank. The chassis itself, though, the original M48, has a huge amount of similarities to just about every single model and platform you could think of. Pretty much a staple of the American armored might during the 50s, really. Uh, when you look at tanks, you know, uh, in movies and shows and things, nowadays in the modern era, you're, of course, you're seeing the more modern tanks, but... The M60 and the M48 have always been sort of that staple American muscle tank. You know, it just, when you used to play with the little green army men, this was the tank that you got normally in its kind of shape configuration. I always get mixed up with the booties on these tanks. You either get the uh, the veined booty that you just see there, or you get sort of the, the flat closed back hole, which uh, the original M48 pattern series has, the M48 uh, A1. So, you know, there's a lot of different changes on these things, and I could go through all day what kinds they are, but for the most part, you're getting a 90mm gun, uh, a quite powerful engine, and uh, the hull and the turret are of a different kind of design that we're normally used to with the American armor during that time. So, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please, please, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a like, hit that thumb button. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, please hit the little bell by the subscribe button. It really does help me out notifying you guys of new content coming out. If you do want to support my channel, I would encourage you to check in the description box below for my social media accounts, my uh, merchandise store, and also my Patreon account. Thank you to everyone who's been donating on my Patreon. It really does help me and my channel, and thank you, thank you so, so much. Truly, though, it, I can't thank you enough and appreciate you all for doing so. Uh, I will catch you again next time. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the video, and I'll see you on the next video. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.